Welcome back to an Act Analysis and Tips for Animators. And today I'm going to cover The Morning Show, season one and actually episode one. And I'm going to cover things like subtext, character composition, character interaction, character gestures, and familiar or unfamiliar environments. There's a bunch of stuff. I have a lot to cover. So let's go. fantastic show it was great going through those episodes again season two is going to start soon it's going to be awesome can't wait to watch this but before i go just in case you're new to this channel hi my name is jd and i do act analysis clips like these i do animation analysis clips i do rib reviews product reviews i do lectures i do a bunch of stuff this is the beginning pitch if you watch my clips you know what's what that is it's basically me telling you look around if you like it and subscribe so you don't miss any of those things but if you don't like it maybe hang around and see if you like it later but that is the usual youtube pitch and i'm gonna leave it at that let's keep it simple let's get to the sequence and the first one is about props. If you watch my clips, you know I love props. And this is her getting ready for work in a ginormous apartment, holy moly. And then she puts on the ring. She forgets something and puts on the ring. And you can see this here. She puts it on, it was uh, a little bit of pain going through. This could be because she doesn't really wear it anymore because she's not really with her husband anymore. She could have a swollen finger. It could be all kinds of reasons. But to me, it's a cool, tiny little extra thing it's a little moment that gives us a bit more history about the whole character and this is why I like props a it's an interesting thing where you can show some pantomime that uh, that painful thing but it just gives us an extra layer we get to know the character just a bit more because i like props not just because you have to you know use them where she puts on a watch or has to do something here or just you know or as an animator you deal with constraints but it's just again an extra layer to the performance that might be subtle but it gives you an opportunity to show, in this case, finger detail. So that's like in terms of polish for animation, that's pretty cool. You can show here different facial expressions, kind of like a gear change exercise. And I totally understand that you have to think about the movements first in terms of the weight aspect of the straightening, the turn, the weight shift. I totally understand. And that should be your focus first. But once you're comfortable with this and you can do things like these, where you know there's all kinds of movements here and you can confidently animate this, I think it's cool to think about those extra layers of performances. Speaking of performances, this is great. So there was something bad that happened, just in case you haven't watched it, I'm not gonna spoil too much, but they have a phone call. So it's them two talking to those two. And this is such a great setup where you have character, if it's one or two, whatever, and they have a phone, it's on speaker. And then do you have another group of people, one or two, again, speaker, okay, this could be multiple people, whatever. But you get to see what they really think. So they pretend to be nice, even though he says some outlandish stuff and it gives you as an acting person, you know, an opportunity to show this. Like he's looking at the other guy going, did you really just say this? And this is just such a great sequence where they can pretend there's a lot of subtext. You can have a anticipation of a reaction before the character actually talks to the other person, there's gonna be something where you can see where he says something and she does not agree at all with what he just said. There's so much awesome back and forth. And this scene continues where she has moments where she listens and she, she can't continue to listen to this. And she has a little, <clears throat> okay, well, let me tell you what's really going on. And as she says this, she still has some moments where she looks at him either for approval or she can't believe what she's saying or there's just so much more you can do. And this goes on into bigger reactions where he does mention something here about money and she has, mm. <laughs> they both have a reaction there. There's just so much you can do. And this continues and continues and continues. And if you do have something like this, it's great where once she does this, she tells him a specific thing. Again, it's a story thing. I don't want to reveal too much, but she has that moment of when she goes back, she still has this she still has gestures and reactions even though she is not in the room with these people so think about that if you do have a performance like this where you can show that they're listening to what's going on they can have a reaction and there's a lot of subtext where the voice is all friendly but that's kind of more what she really feels when in terms of in terms of anger so i think there's a lot of pretend play where you can really show the body language despite the audio being nice. Like there's, there's so much opportunity with a character talking to someone else over a speakerphone. And also having the second character, there's a lot of back and forth and there can be reactions to each other's reactions. I think there's, there's so many layers to this. I think it's just a really great sequence as an animator to explore. This one I picked just because of A, the reveal. It's always like reveals and it's fun to go into an immediate close up, somewhat close up, right? Where you can show something and there's another close up where you can go back and forth. But the main thing is that she says in the background, I'm ready. And this is why he's looking back. 
And then the step back here is this. And that to me is cool as an animator because you can then technically focus, if you don't make it too long here, go back, you can show whatever, it could be lip sync, it could be pantomime, but it's a close up. And then after this, you can show somewhat body mechanics in a weight shift, but it's mostly implied. But then the reveal is a full body character and you can see that turn, getting up, getting ready and walking. That's very complicated from an animation point of view. So now within one shot, you combine multiple things from a close up to a full body. And this could be interesting, for instance, as a for instance, like a demo reel, right? Imagine she's not here. You have text, this opens, text goes away. You can have an immediate, very complicated, you know, like very impressive close up facial acting and then reveal right after full body mechanics. This is all in one shot. The cool thing too is that when she exits, she does this here. There's a little touching of, okay, I'm okay, thanks. And you can immediately show a little bit of their relationship. So as you do things like body mechanics, imagine this is your assignment of getting out of the chair. So you add a swivel chair, that's interesting, mechanics of weight, weight transfer, and then a walk mechanics. But if you add another character and you can look at him, he doesn't do much, he just basically nods. So from an animation point of view, that's not very complicated. But if you do this by adding another character and then you add this, I like that because again, it shows their relationship and kind of how they interact. And again, as I said before, it's an extra layer to the performance that's you know, very interesting to me. And actually continuing with the sequence, this is cool because as something very important, not to, well, kind of to her has happened, but to her surrounding some other character, she has to go back to work and they're all very curious about what's going to happen. You can see the looks of them, the looks of them, of that. And then that's kind of cool. I like this in terms of, this gets a bit complicated because of a, a walk, but imagine what if your character has a hat on, like a cap or something, and is rotated down. So you actually don't see the face. And you just add a walk cycle and walking from A to B. And, you know, basically if that is your surface, the character is a walk cycle like that. Camera is here, also going this and tracking this character. And that's it. But the main aspect is this. You're adding this in your animation. It's all about people interacting with this character. And maybe again, just because he or she has a hat on and just kind of walks and doesn't say anything, then you can do stuff like this. Like, really? Those kind of reactions. I think that's kind of cool. And you can also change it around where it's the opposite, where it's like this. So you really don't have to focus on the face and it's just the character's back moving forward. And then it's all, again, all about reactions, how people look at that person and react to them. You don't have to add a bunch of stuff like another character walking. It could just be stationary people reacting, or maybe walking in like her. But that's cool to me as a setup, that, that walk cycle centered, so you don't think in terms of compositional, in terms of thirds, they are centered and everything is about reactions and you animating pantomime reactions. I think that would be really cool as a shot setup. This one is about framing. They are a strange, spoiler, they're not quite together again, hence that previous thing about the uh, the wedding ring there. And I like this, the framing was very clear. He is so at the edge here. That distance between the two characters clearly tells us, yeah, there is uh, there's some cold distance there. And then you have her in the middle, the daughter, almost serving as a buffer. So as you go between the back and forth, you can see even though they are talking to each other, there's still that in between and it goes back and forth when you see this, she's still here. And even at the point where when they hug and they actually have a physical connection, it cuts to him being completely alone. And then when she actually gets out of there, he thinks, all right, well, let me comfort her. And she literally has the moment of, no, stay away. I can't deal with this. I love those little tiny things. And then watch out, boop, boop, boop. <laughs> get, get out, get out, and then he leaves. So this is just to me all about character placement, right? So if you have two characters or maybe even three, think about that. How far apart are they? How close are they? Is there someone in the middle that almost serves as a referee or as a buffer so that they don't start fighting? So really think about this. And even if you have an over the shoulder, multiple people, or when they exit, is that character then trying to get closer or even further apart because they know now there's nothing between them. Maybe this whole situation will explode. So just really explore where are the characters position and why, and how is the helping us in terms of telling the story and getting the characters, you know, getting uh, for us getting to know the characters more. 
This is awesome in terms of what's at the top and then what's below here. Also, this is awesome. It tells us immediately almost kind of the power of all of this, right? It's empty. They have their own private area there. And this is my main thing here. Watch. And it's not always, so it's not super in your face. But if you look at his legs here, so when you scrub forward, see this moment of that. See that? You got that nervous little up and down again here. Then it continues and it's at the end again, right there, right there, that nervous up and down. So it's basically he, when you, if you listen to the show, his delivery, he is, he sounds very relaxed. He makes a case for another person in terms of uh, potential, you know, re-employment and salary raise. So he tries to convince this person, but then underneath he's actually really nervous. So it's almost like the, the actual literal sub text where I'm nervous, but I got to pretend to be just fine. But he's still really engaged and really wants to convince that person. So if you look at the contrast between the two characters, he is leaning forward. He wants to engage and he wants to tell him, hey, these are all good reasons to do X, Y, Z. Versus him, who is not super leaned away, but not leaning in. So you see that contrast of, well, I'm kind of OK. Plus, I'm reading what I'm about to eat. And there's even that little barrier. And I mean, afterwards, he brings it down and they, they do talk. But it's an interesting setup in terms of just contrast. How are they posed out and what is going on in areas where this character can see this? So this is, again, this will be your pretend. I'm lying through my face, but the body language always tells the truth. This is such an awesome moment with her where she comes in as a guest and she makes introductions and she's the makeup person. You can see this here. It's nicely framed where that's in the mirror. It's like, hi, hi, hi. And then she does this and she can't see this, right? So watch her again. So watch when she does that gesture right there. <laughs> so good. Because she, you know, she has the moment where she talks to her and she's smiling. And this is so matter of fact of, well, she's not ready. She doesn't look good enough for TV. Come on, come on, do the little, yeah, do, do your makeup thing. And it's awesome just in terms of how she does it. And then that little thing of, yeah, come on. And then goes back into, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. It's such a, a, an awesome small thing of, come on, get to work. Now, oh, I just wanted to point that out. It's such a great gesture. Love that moment. That whole cast in the whole show is just so good in terms of acting. I love it. And this one is about the familiar versus the unfamiliar. So if you watch my clips, you know I talk a lot about that in terms of characters' awareness of where they are. Are they somewhere for the first time or not? So if you look at her when she enters, she has that, whoa, okay. And she asks her, are you okay? And she goes, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. And she has even that little head back of, yeah, I'm fine, even though it's not quite. But she's very confident, but then it cuts to this massive set, a ton of people, the crane here. It's just a big stage that she is not really used to. She's more of a smaller time reporter journalist than her. So this is just a reminder that when you have a person and you have a set and you place that person within the set, just be mindful of, are they there for the first time? Yes or no. And if they are, use that to your advantage. And maybe that person is super familiar. And then you have an interesting contrast in terms of how they interact and, and how they talk to each other. And I think that's a huge thing. And it's, to be honest, almost like a thing that's underexplored in movies and TV shows in an animated fashion where it just, you think about your character, the body mechanics and the acting, and just there's so much you have to keep track of in terms of believable body mechanics with uh, interesting acting choices. There's so much to do in animation. And if you're an animator watching this, you know this, there's so much to do. But on top of that, I would still explore the idea of, all right, my character is somewhere because if you go beyond the exercises, it's not going to be a character in an empty scene. It's going to be character somewhere. But then think about that. Is that character there for the first time? Yes or no. Like my main example is hotel versus your home. You switch on the light. That's the action, right? You switch on light. That's what the character has to do. That's the objective. At home, I know where the switch is. I don't have to look. I can just turn on the light like this, switch on, you know, whatever. In a hotel, I don't know. I walk in and it's, where is the thing? Oh, it's over there. Now switch on the light. Technically, the, the objective of switching on the light is the same, but how the character goes about it is different because the character is either in a familiar or unfamiliar environment. And I love that exploration of characters. So think about that as you, you know, start your next shot.
And speaking of next shot, if you're starting your next shot and you want me to help you, oh, segue is cracking me up. I cracked myself up. So if you, so weird. If you want me to help you with your shots, you know, the pitches, the workshop, I have a workshop you can sign up at any time. I can help you with all those things. Link in the description with all the information. And um, that's it for that pitch. So uh, that, that's it for the clip. So if you're still watching till the very end, as always, thank you for your patience. I appreciate that you spend the time watching this whole thing. And I hope you liked it. And if you thought that's actually really cool and I don't want to miss my next uploads, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell button so you don't miss any of those uploads. It's the pitch at the end. I get two pitches beginning and the end. But that's it. So like and subscribe. So the usual kind of pitch like beep, 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 beep. Anyway, that's it for me though. Thank you for watching and I will hopefully see you. You'll see me in my next upload.